Our guest today is sumo wrestler Kon Hiyori. In 2018 and 2019, she placed second in the women's open weight division at the World Sumo Championships. A British filmmaker made a documentary about Kon and her single-minded passion for sumo. It found a global audience. The COVID-19 pandemic hasn't been easy for athletes like Kon. She spoke with us about her current status in the world of sumo. In sumo, you win by pushing your opponent out of the ring or making them touch the ground with anything other than their feet. The image of sumo is that it's a big sport, a sport for big men especially. But personally, I like to think of sumo as a sport anyone can enjoy. A major car parts manufacturer in Aichi. The company has a sumo team, and Kohn is part of it. The sole female member, here she is at practice. This sumo team was founded 70 years ago. It's got an impressive history. The team has won countless titles over the years. Lots of companies in Japan have sumo teams, and this really is one of the best. I joined the team in April 2020 as its first female member. Women are obliged to wear clothing under the mawashi, the traditional loincloth. I wear a form-fitting uniform and put my mawashi on top of that. Kone works a full day at the company, then goes to practice, two hours every evening. She follows a training program that she put together herself. I do a lot of traditional training techniques, shiko, foot stamps, suriyashi, a kind of shuffle walk. Some coaches say to get stronger, all you need are shiko and suriyashi. Shiko is raising your legs, then lowering them. In sumo, you win by disrupting your opponent's center of gravity. To keep yourself stable, you work on strengthening your legs and your core. Suriyashi, on the other hand, makes you better at pushing, which is the foundation of sumo. You do it without anyone there. You're improving leg movement and lower back strength, focusing on your form. The Sumo World Championships are the premier event in women's sumo, and Kohn has racked up two second-place finishes there. She says she uses her relatively small size to her advantage. I do pushing sumo. I'm shorter, meaning I have a lower center of gravity. I use that to my advantage, get an insight on them, and push them right out. That's my ideal match. Your pushing power doesn't come from your arms. You use your lower body to generate strength. It takes quite a bit of technique, and I think it's easier with a low center of gravity. Sumo is a sport about bodies bashing into each other. But at the same time, each wrestler is putting their heart and soul on the line in that ring. Sometimes you have a moment where those hearts collide as well. I think that makes sumo very special. Kone is a sumo athlete with a global profile. She started doing sumo 18 years ago. She grew up in an Aomori prefecture town with a thriving sumo scene. Aomori is at the northern tip of Japan's main island, and sumo has always been popular there. Every elementary school has a ring. Schools have tournaments. If you grow up in these towns, you'll grow up around sumo. I have a brother who's three years older than me, and he did sumo. So when I was six, I started going to the dojo with him. And there were lots of girls doing sumo in the community. It was normal for both boys and girls to practice sumo together. In elementary school, Kone won many tournaments. 
She was even beating the boys. I was good. I was big, and I always listened to my coaches, so I naturally became better. I really didn't lose. It doesn't matter if I win or lose, I should put everything into my sumo. That's what I got taught in elementary back then. I don't think I lost, even to the boys. Kohn continued on the path of sumo into junior high school. But she started to realize that the prospects for women sumo wrestlers weren't great. Sumo is considered Japan's national sport, and the grand sumo tournaments are the pinnacle of professional competition. But in grand sumo events, women are not even allowed to enter the ring. Even if I was as good as I could be, there were no pro events like grand sumo for women. When we entered junior high school, a lot of the other girls started quitting. And all of a sudden, there were fewer matches. The numbers weren't all that different for boys and for girls, but up to then, boys and girls could wrestle together. Even if you have this ultimate passion for sumo, you don't have as many chances to prove yourself. That hurts, and a lot of girls end up choosing a different path. Despite the fact that many of the girls around her were quitting, Kohn kept wrestling through high school. She represented Japan at the Junior Sumo World Championships, winning in back-to-back -back years. What kept her going was a dream she had treasured for many years. Back in elementary school, I told my coaches I was going to quit a number of times during practice. They reminded me that there were kids around the world who would love to do sports, but didn't have the financial means. They said I should be grateful and enjoy it while I could. I realized that in sumo, all you need is a mawashi. Really, all you need is your body. It's a sport that children everywhere can learn. It can open up all sorts of doors for them. So my big dream became to make sumo more popular abroad. The training is so tough, and eventually, I lost all the other women wrestlers who shared the same passion for sumo. But I still had this dream to keep me going. That drove me. After high school, Cohen attended a university with a sumo team. And she put in motion her plan to help sumo go global, organizing a special class abroad. I traveled alone to Laos and created a sumo class for elementary and junior high schoolers. The first half was an introduction, and the second half was actual sparring. I would wrestle four or five kids at a time, and they were just so into it. I could feel it. Their fun was infectious. For the first time while in the ring, I felt what a fun sport sumo is. I knew from experience that sumo is a sport where you can share a fun experience even without words. In that sense, I believe it's a great way to communicate across cultures. Meanwhile, Cohn herself was training hard every day as a member of the university sumo team. She was selected to represent Japan at the World Championships two years in a row. This video is from her second year at the tournament, the final match. This was the second consecutive year Cohn had to settle for silver. 
It was my senior year of college, so I thought my competitive career would end there. I really wanted to be the best in the world, but I lost in the finals. I honestly felt so disappointed in myself. Some of the foreign wrestlers are really strong, and they're very experienced. Lots of the competitors are in their 30s. For some reason, I had it in my head that amateur sumo was just for students. But when I talked to different people, foreign people especially, they would say, wait, who says you have to quit now? And so I decided I would keep going a little longer. Cohn finished university and joined the auto parts manufacturer. She planned to compete at the World Championships for a third time as a member of the company team. But all that changed in 2020 with the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic. For a time, we couldn't even practice because of the risk. So I would train at home. I do shiko or dancing or yoga to better understand how to use my body effectively. Sometimes I wondered if there was any point in continuing sumo. For about 18 months, Kohn was unable to do her usual training regimen. In October 2021, she took part in a national competition for the first time since the start of the pandemic. She competed in the open weight team event. In this match, her opponent was a university student. I really lost badly. I hadn't been able to practice sumo, but I had come up with all these other training methods. I was confident. But the truth is, I had gotten weaker. Ultimately, strength is a big part of sumo. I forgot how to use my strength, and my strength had gone down in the first place. That experience made me realize my true feelings. I want to train more. I want more matches. In 2022, Kohn hopes to represent Japan for the third time at the Sumo World Championships. Her goal is a first place finish. She's sparring with the men on her team, day in and day out, giving it everything she's got. After two years, my clock has started ticking again. The Japanese sumo season is getting started. I have to do well in the April tournament. And in May, it's the Japan qualifiers for the world championships. Winning the qualifiers is my goal right now. If you compete with someone, then you know how strong they are, how hard they practiced. So I have immense respect for my opponents. But unlike most sports, it's not the strongest person that wins. In sumo, it's the person with the right mind, body, and skills. Girls don't cry. This is something that the head of my dojo in elementary school used to say. When I was that age, I would cry all the time. If I got hurt, if I lost, I cry now too. When I heard these words, they sort of surprised me. I thought women were weak, that they cried all the time. But I realized then that I wanted to be stronger. Whenever I'm in a tough spot, these words pop in my head. 